in a big family. My dad ran away from China, from Fujian, and ended up in Malaysia. And most of the people go closer to Taiwan. <clears throat> My dad just further away and met a beautiful woman, married. They have 11 children. So I, I'm the sixth. I have there are eight boys, three girls in my big family, and uh, I'm the middle, the six. And we grew up hating Christian. Well, we just don't, because we're all idol worshippers, ancestors, you know, Chinese folk religions. So to us, Christianity is very strange. Why? Think about it. Uh, they talk to air around them. That's how they pray. And they're not very smart people. Because during those days, you all probably knew it, I view back 60, 70 years ago, things are very, it's not easy to make money. So I don't know why the Christians give away their money, their offerings. So to me, I'm very offended. Oh, I just have a distaste of Christianity. Don't care about them. But once in a while, I have a chance to hear the gospel. I will go to a meeting like this, not in the church setting, because I, I don't like church at all. It was after school program. Some missionary came. I still remember the first time I went there because some girls invited me. I'm, not, I'm more interested in those girls than all the other things. So this is after school program. I was in high school. I remember I was sitting down like you guys, about 20 students then. I was standing in the back of the classroom with my back against the wall. I wasn't sitting down, I was standing like this. And uh, then this, I saw this, I called them, excuse me, okay? Our place, we call them white devil. This is Malaysia. So it's a white missionary. What is going on here? So he came in the classroom and he talks about something strange. I have no clue what he talks about. Then suddenly it began to rain. It began to rain, not outside the classroom, but inside the classroom. The raindrops came from my eyes. I cannot control, I cry. I don't know why I cry, but I cry. I mean, I don't know the boo-hoo-hoo, but just the tears just come, come out. I just can't resist. I just have to leave. So anyway, so after a while, they say, Tony, uh, come, come, come. I don't know why you're here today. Somebody brought you here. Somebody pulled you. Somebody tried to bribe you here, whatever. They just take me again. This time, not to a, to a fellowship, a movie night. So movie night, okay. I can handle movie. Don't talk to me. I don't like people preach to me. So I definitely will not preach to you today. So watch a movie called Left Behind. How many of you have watched this movie, Left Behind? So most of you have. <laughs> Quite a few people did it. I mean, I was just non-believers. Yes, I think it's a good movie. It's an awakening. For me, back in, this is 50 years ago, it's not called Left Behind. It's the same storyline about the end of the world. It's called a thief in the night. If you uh, have white hair or something, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's called A Thief in the Night. But anyway, so I watched this movie and then the pastor gave an invitation. I was thinking, all right, it's free, right? Air is free. But unless you breathe, you cannot live, even though it's free. So salvation is free. You have to repent, believe, and then you can be saved, even though it's free. You have to receive it. The invitation was given. I struggled. Then eventually I raised my hand. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I've done a lot of crazy things in my life. I've beaten up a lot of people. And you have children, right? I have five younger brothers I have to take care. I cannot take care of five younger brothers. I told them, if you don't listen to me, I'm going to hit you. 50 times. So one brother disobeyed me three times. So I, I hit him 150 times. I was 12 years old, I think it was 8 years old. I hit him 150 times on the head. And he fell. I thought he died. 
He literally, I, I thought he, he, he's like a dead person. He very pretty. I knock him out. But anyway, I have this explosive anger I cannot control. I'm a bad, bad boy. I'm a brat. I'm, just a, I'm a bad sinner. You guys are good sinners. I'm a big sinner. You guys are small sinners. So I was that kind of environment. That's why the first time that the gospel was preached to me by that white uh, missionary guy, it impacted me. And by that invitation, I pray, I receive Christ, baptize. God opened the door, just as he did for you. I came to America. I studied computer science, software engineer. Studied and uh, graduated, married, and uh, have uh, my first child. I was on my way. Uh, I, I work at the University of Oklahoma Medical School. Fulfill all my so-called American dreams. You have a house, your car, your children. You know all this, right? All them, all that you want. I mean, uh, house, cars, family, children, vacation, all the rest. I took uh, my family out for a vacation. On the highway, we hit, have an accident. Head-on accident. Three person died. My face is crushed. Okay. You have, you have eaten pizza, right? My face is like a pizza, flat, flat, and it was broken, like a pizza, and they use a plate like this, still in here, four screws still in here, to, because my jaw broke in the middle, and they put staple to bring me back. They use my driver license to put me back together, because it's flat like a pizza. And my my pelvis broke in four parts, like this. And the screws, this thick, this long. Four on the left and four on the eight screws go to the backbone, protruding like this. They tie, they tie my butt together, but both my butt broke apart. And they cut me up from here, down, and then both sides. You know how do you, how do you cut a chicken? You know, some of you know how to cut a chicken. But anyway, the right foot have turned red in color, infected. What do you do? The doctors here says, chop it off. You want to save your life or you want to save one, feet, one, one foot? Which one would you choose? Hello? Which one would you choose? Save your life or save your foot? Life? You're going to let this go? My brother went to the hospital. He says, do half. Don't cut it all. Cut, cut half. If it doesn't work, then cut it all. So, I'm telling you, the, the doctors here just get it done, right? Yeah, you can get it done, but I will be, I don't have a leg. But anyway, so they cut half. How do they cut half? My, my right foot is like this. And everything under my thigh, they slice it over. So it's like a curtain, like a wave. So everything under my bone is cut. They, they drill two holes. So I lost 14 pints of blood because they charged me money, 14 pints of blood. They, they put, I mean, the uh, transfusion. Anyway, the doctor says I've only 10% survival. But then uh, in, on the 10th day, the doctor tells me that you need to bury your daughter. My only child died in the accident. On the 10th day, they told me to bury my daughter. Uh, the, uh, they, they, they didn't bury my daughter. I asked my family to do so because they expect me to die. So they don't want to perform the funeral for my daughter and then one or two weeks later, I die. Same place, same family, two times can handle it. So they want to bury me with my daughter. That was their goal. Because when they buy the coffin for my daughter, they already look at mine. So I was supposed to die, but I did it. God doesn't want me to die. And of course, by the grace of God, I was broken here down, chopped to. The doctor says, Tony, you need to learn to walk. 
because you can lie down in bed. And even after a few weeks in the hospital, they say, you need to go to walk. Wake up and walk. I have this purple basketball face. I have all the screws with me, everything, three IVs. They still want to put a walker or force me to walk. I remember I learned to walk after the accident, you know, all these crazy things with me. And I walked, they took me down to the basement with the basketball court. I have a walker in front of me and a wheelchair behind me. The nurse walked with me. I took a step, she took a step with me. I walked beside the wall just in case I need to lean. So this is what I did. I said, thank you, Jesus. Every step I walk, I thank God. I said, Lord, thank you. You know, if all my pelvis broke in four parts, this leg is chopped in half. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I walked the whole basketball court. I think half an hour. I walked ever since. God healed me like this. Nothing, no, no side effect or no whatever. I was so much, so many bones broken, screws and all this thing. When weather changed or anything, no uh, arthritis or anything else. The, Lord, the greatest miracle is not my healing. The greatest miracle is when I first look at the police report. I think two or three months later. First time I could use the bathroom. I'm all connected. I don't know you all know what it means, right? You don't have to go to the bathroom. They just connect you to a machine. So the first time I could use the bathroom, I remember I went to the bathroom. I took the police report to look what's, what happened to me. Why I end up like this. Because I, know, because I almost died and my face all messed up. So I took the police report and read what happened. I was in my car with my wife, my daughter, and my friend was driving on my car, and the other person, he slapped. And he came over to our lane, hit his head on. So I remember his name, Rodriguez. So he came over to hit us, so he has a ticket. He has to pay. My medical bill total, me and my wife, is $100,000. This is like 35 years. And in 88. So, 35 years ago, yeah. So, it's a lot of money now. But anyway, so this person, no, no insurance, no money, no job, no property, nothing. Zero everything. He's just like someone that just swam across the, the river. So, he just have nothing. I remember I bowed my head and I prayed. I said, Lord Jesus, just as you help me, help this person. Just as you have mercy on me, have mercy on this person. From my heart, I was able to forgive this person. It's not me. I'm not that kind of guy. Because the Bible says, if it's anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed, the new has begun. That's why the gospel can transform anyone, anywhere, anytime. That is the power of the gospel. Seven years later, God called me to quit my job. I was a software engineer. After working for 10 years at the medical school, three years after the accident, seven years after the accident, then I surrendered the ministry, pastor a church in Oklahoma. And one day, this dog, <laughs> his daddy come in play. His daddy come to my church like you guys. So I hope some of you will join us. I'm here to recruit too, okay? Go to the mission. That's why his daddy came to our church. Come on, don't live, live for God. Don't live a good life. Don't live a good, boring life. Live the best life. Because the good is the enemy of the best. Don't live a good life. Live the best life that God wants you to be. Live for his glory. Live for him. So he's, he challenges so I surrender and I joined the mission field 20 years ago, 2004. I go to the mission field. I quit my job uh, 20 years ago and then go for training six months. So anyway, so I've been in the mission field for 20 years, serving. We're based in China, uh, based in Taiwan and work inside China. 
And now our job is more for the, the base here in Dallas. We work to serve all the Chinese churches around the world. So we, me and my wife have been to over 50 countries doing training and discipleship around the world. So we're here. Today you talk about discipleship. What is discipleship and evangelism? That is what your church, I look at your church web page, your church goal this year is evangelism far and near, discipleship, right? You, you have that in your web page. So, so I'm not going to talk a lot. So it's your turn to talk. Today is your turn to talk because it is the training. What is discipleship? Let's pray and then we'll start with the... Let's pray. Dear God, we come before your presence asking, Lord, that your Holy Spirit leads and guide us. Help us to remember, O oh Lord, how you've been merciful and gracious to us. Every one of us come to know you through someone, someone near and far, some from our families, some from strangers, have shared the gospel with us. So, Lord, just as we have freely received your gospel and your grace, so we should freely give it away and tell others. So, Lord, as we gather in your name, we ask for your Holy Spirit to guide and lead us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's watch a movie and then I'll talk. Mm, let me try like this. Do I point here or there? Point where? Oh, it's playing out. Okay. I had a vision. I saw a dark and stormy ocean. In that ocean, I thought I saw multitudes of poor human beings plunging and floating and shouting and shrieking, cursing and struggling and drowning. And out of this dark, angry ocean, I saw a mighty rock that rose up with its summit towering high above the stormy seas. And all around the base of the rock, I saw a vast platform. And on this platform, I saw with delight a number of the poor wretches continually climbing out of the angry ocean. And I saw that some of those who were already safe on the platform were fervently helping the poor creatures still in the angry waters to reach safety. But something puzzled me. Although they had all been rescued at one time or another from the ocean, nearly everyone seemed to have forgotten all about it. Anyway, the memory of its darkness and danger no longer troubled them. And what was equally strange and perplexing to me was that most of these people did not seem to have any care, that is, any agonizing care, about the poor perishing ones who were struggling and drowning right before their eyes. But then I saw something wonderful. I saw a great being from above come straight from his palace, right through the dark clouds. And he leapt right into the raging sea among the drowning people. And there I saw him toiling to rescue them until the sweat of his great anguish ran down in blood. And he was continually crying to those already rescued, to those whom he had helped with his own bleeding hands, to come and help him in the painful and laborious task of saving the lost. But the strangest thing of all was that those on the platform to whom he called were so taken up with their trades and professions and money saving and pleasures and families and community and gatherings and religions and arguments about it that they did not respond to the cry that came to them from this wonderful being who had himself by his spirit gone down into the sea. And so the multitude went on, struggling and shrieking and drowning in the darkness. And then I saw something that seemed stranger than anything that had happened before in this very strange vision. Those whom this wonderful being cried out to to come and help him in his difficult task were always praying and crying to him to come to them. Some wanted him to come and stay with them and spend his time and strength in making them happier. Others wanted him to come and take away various doubts and misgivings they had concerning the truth of some letters which he had written them. Others wanted him to come and make them feel more secure on the rock, so secure that they would be totally sure they would never slip off again. 
they used to meet and get as close to the rock as they could, and looking towards the mainland where they thought the great being was, they would cry out, come to us, come and help us. But all this time, he was down among the poor drowning creatures, crying to them in a hoarse voice, come to me, come and help me. And then I understood it all. It was plain enough. That sea was the ocean of life, the sea of real, actual human existence. Those multitudes of people struggling in the stormy sea were the billions of sinners from every race, language, and nation. That great sheltering rock was Calvary, the place of the cross. And the people on it were those who had been rescued from sin and hell and who professed to be followers of Jesus Christ. That mighty being who called to them from the tempest was the Son of God, the same yesterday, today, and forever, who is still struggling to save the dying multitudes about us from this terrible doom of damnation, and whose voice can be heard above the music and machinery and noise of life, calling on the rescued to come and help him save the world. My friends in Christ, you are rescued from the waters. You are on the rock. Jesus is in the dark sea, calling on you to come and help him. Will you go? All right. You see this, all of us are here because someone has shared a gospel with you. For me, it's a stranger. And of course, I, he didn't know I, why I ran away when he shared the gospel. And uh, when they, you want to see the work of God, the power of God at work, you just go proclaim the gospel. You see God's power at work. So what we have received, go tell others. Every day, loan me your hands every day. Come, let's try. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Every day, or every second, ten seconds has passed. Every second, one and a half people die not knowing about Jesus. So every day, there are 86,400 seconds. Every day, there are 120,000 people die not knowing that Jesus has died and rose again for them. Their salvation is available. So every day, that many, well, every week, there are 86, eight, 860,000. So every month times 30, like 3.6 million. What, what it was, it's just a lot of people died. So every week is, uh, eight, every week is, Every day is this, let me see. Every day is 200, yeah, 120,000 times 30, 12 to 3.6, right? Yes, correct, 3.6 million. Every year, 43 million people died. It's the whole state of Texas. So every year, there is a whole state of Texas in hell. There's a lot of people. So that's why we have to go and tell others. What is discipleship? Let's, because that was given to me, this topic. So let's see what Jesus says. Let's read it together. What did Jesus say? And he said to them, Discipleship, because disciple in a sense is a follow. It's what you do following Jesus. So you follow Jesus. Jesus for, disciples are those who follow Jesus. But to follow Jesus is your choice. It's someone who chooses to follow Jesus. How? By obeying his commandments. And Jesus says, I will change you. You cannot be fisher or man. Jesus, I will make you. And Jesus has to do something in your life. You cannot just come and say, okay, come. You cannot do it yourself. It's not through practice and here and there. It is just through obedience, and Jesus will transform you. So you cannot brag 
like Paul says, I have nothing to brag except my weaknesses. I am who I am today because of the grace of God. So, Jesus will make you decide, um, this, help you to, this, to follow him and to become fishers of men. You and I cannot do it ourselves. He has to transform you. So, discipleship is simple. Paul says it in the 1 Corinthians 11. 1. Let's read it together. Paul says it. Will you dare to say it? Follow me as I follow Christ. Discipleship is training others to follow Christ. But are you following Christ? If you are not following Christ, you cannot ask others to do so. Otherwise, you become a Pharisee. Follow me, uh, imitate me as I am of Christ. So discipleship is simply following my example as I obey Christ. So today you talk, you ask, uh, you, your pastor asked me to talk about discipleship. So I get, we're going to do something what Jesus wants us to do. Simple. That's why you saw this movie, just now a small movie clip. Go tell others about what Jesus came to do. That's a far most important. Why? It doesn't matter what happened to your life. You pray. What do you pray for? You pray for somebody to get a job, to get married, to get, get children, right? What do you all pray for? To get healthy? Uh, you have cancer for healing? You pray. What else do you pray for? Come on. What else do you all pray for? Did I say everything already? Pray for good grades? Get a graduation? Then what? Have grandchildren? Pray for safe delivery. And then what else? Come on. What else do you pray for? Pray for a brace, get a big car, a big house, and then what else? Come on, tell me. What else do you pray for? What other things people pray for? Pray for our family to be healthy, loving. Everything you pray for. Every one day you pray for, one day is going to die. Do you know that? You pray for super healing, he's going to die. It doesn't matter he get cancer here, cancer there. He's going to die. Eventually, everyone is going to die. The only thing that matters in life is the gospel. Really. That's why it's so important. This is what Jesus said. The last thing that Jesus said before he goes to heaven, the last thing he says to us is this. Let's read it together. Acts 1, 8. Be, but you will receive... How many of you want to experience the power of God in your life? Really? For real? For, for real? You really want to hear uh, experience the power of God in your life? Very easy. Really, extremely easy. Because you, did, you had experienced God's power, you don't have to do anything. He has to do something, right? <laughs> you can't do anything. I was in... Uh, <laughs> I was in, I just came back from, uh, in summer camp. We have a camp in Vietnam. Vietnam is a communist country. Uh, you all know that, right? It's a communist country. It's, you don't, cannot freely do all those things. But that day, when I was there preaching, uh, the church of rented the facility, and no more space. So they, they pack. So they are like, nine, the, the church is about 60 or 70 space, but 96 people came. So they, they are meeting all the way to the road, to the road side. You know, before, before the road, there's this, whatever you call those, walkway, whatever you call those things, right? Side or sidewalk. So people are in the sidewalk. I was sitting there, packed. I was just preaching the simple gospel. And I gave an invitation. Some, of course, some came forward to pray to receive Christ. One lady came forward. Because I was praying for everybody. I don't know, or I, this is, I've not, I never met any one of them, so it's the first time I met them. So, the, I mean, so it's a new place I go to. So I, I pray for this one lady. She says, Pastor, can you pray for me? I said, yeah. What? How can I pray for you? She says, uh, I have a noisy stomach. I said, what do you mean? 
noisy stomach. Or it's like a living thing moving around in my stomach and making noise. I said, it's okay. I said, well, I never heard of it before. I said, how long? Many months already. Okay. What do you do? This is unheard of. For me, it's unheard of. I said, what is going on? So I pray, I said, Lord Jesus, may you stretch off your hand and heal this lady. And this is strange enough because I've seen a lot of things. So I think this is not normal. I say, I say, Lord Jesus, I do pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you evil spirit demons to come out of this person. I pray in Jesus' name. I command you to come out. At the end of the service, about half an hour later, I received a text. You can read it later if you are interested. The pastor sent me a text. He says, because so about 20 or 30 people responded. He says, somebody pray for a noisy stomach. And she was healed. So all glory to God. I didn't do it. I don't even know what I was doing. So you want to see the power of God? Do this. Jesus says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit, not if, but when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You will be my witnesses. Where? In Jerusalem, all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the world. Be witnesses, which I already just did. I know you realize it, I just witnessed to you that Jesus is the Lord. Just talk about Jesus. Live up the name of Jesus Christ. Tell them how, how he's been gracious to you. That's it. And miracles will, miracles will follow your, the gospel. Simple as that. You want to see miracles? Preach the gospel first. It's very simple. Now, how do I, what do I do? What can I do? Easy. Let's look at Paul. I would like someone to read this. Like now I told you, today is your turn to talk, not me. I talk the first half an hour, you talk the rest of the time. Right? Uh, Acts chapter 26, verse 4 to 23. Anybody can read for us? You can have all my PPT, okay? I give it to your pastor. You can have every one of the PPT. You don't have to take notes, but just this is... Anyone can help us read it? I can stand beside you. So, somebody in the middle, my dear brother. Mm, you have a good Bible. Can you read for us? Uh, yeah, well, it's King James. King James? Oh, I, don't, I don't mind King James. Any James is good enough. Okay. Yeah, wait a minute. Before you do that, I'm going to time you. Okay. Or oh, somebody can time him. Can somebody time him using your stopwatch on your phone, iPhone? Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Anybody going to time him? Raise your hand. Anybody have a stopwatch? You know how to use a stopwatch? You do? Like an alarm, then there's a stopwatch there. The <laughs> somebody can do, it? can do it? Okay, you do it, okay. Wait, don't read it fast, don't read it slow. Really, like you're talking to me, okay? I like your Paul is talking to the uh, uh, a group of people, or the king and the rest, the officer. Okay, you will stand up, probably. Okay, all right. Yeah, stand up. Go front. Or? No, it's up to you. Yeah, it's front. It's good. Yeah. Oh, well, near the front. All right. Well, right. Yes, come on. Right. Talk. Uh, don't don't preach it. Talk to us, okay. like we are an audience. Okay. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify, that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made unto God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come, for which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which then I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints that I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. 
and I punished them oft in, any, in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a, a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both the small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Amen. Time. Give him the hand. Give him the hand. Thank you, brother. What time does he have? 307. Very good. Three minutes. Okay. Wonderful. So your testimony should be around three minutes. Because Paul has so much to say, right? Paul has so many stories to say, right? Yes, three minutes. Now you're trained to do three minutes testimony. That's your homework right now and when you live here. So now it's your turn to talk. So let's go through Paul's testimony in three parts. First, verse 4 to 11, Paul talks about his past. Paul talks about he was a Pharisee and he persecuted Christians. He thinks he's right and everybody else is wrong. I spread the Christians are wrong. So that's how Paul lived his life before he met Christ. Verse 4 to 11, Paul introduces his background. Verse 12 to 18, he talks about Paul, talk, how in the world I become a Christian? What? He talks about his uh, Damascus uh, encounter. He fell from the, from the horse and Jesus revealed himself to him and he was totally confused. Why? Well, he thought he's serving God by putting Christians to jail, but he was doing the opposite. He got it all wrong because Jesus revealed to him. Then verse 19 to 23, Paul says, it changed. My life totally changed. I no longer pursue Christ, Christian. I go and preach Jesus. And they lock me up. They persecute me. It's fine. It's okay. But I will still do it because it is a calling from God. And I, I have to obey and go whatever it takes to preach the gospel. This is Paul's testimony. His life changed. He was a Pharisee, now a preacher and an evangelist. So he says, then Jesus, so your turn. Your time me now. Okay, I'm, I'd like to invite my wife here, so you haven't heard from her. To come forward, yes. Come and share your testimony with us. So give her a break, give her a hand first, okay? I was like you guys, a lot of guys from Hong Kong. I grew up English all the way. Grade one to great university, all English all the way. I read English and I don't read Chinese at all. And she's Chinese all the way, okay? And except to, to the college. But anyway, so give her a break. Her language, English is not her first language, or not her school language, so. Oh, I have a lot of grammar mistakes, okay? <laughs> Bear with me. I grew up in a very poor family. 
So at a young age, I think that money will solve all my issues. Money will be number one. So I work hard. During those school years, you know, I always go with my friends to a fellowship. And uh, in the church, always have speakers or pastors saying that, you know, Jesus is so wonderful. He can help people. He can, you know, have mercy with you. But I always never listen for myself. I listen for my classmate. I say, God, look at my classmate. She's in big trouble. Go ahead and help her. Oh, uh, Jesus, you know, see another classmate. She, she is not doing well in school. So maybe you give her wisdom. I, never, I always listen for someone else. At age 16, I have an opportunity to come and work in the circular world. I do tuition in one of the tuition, uh, tuition center. Now, in the tuition center, we are paid by commission. If you have more students, you tutor more students, you get more pay. If you do less, you get less pay. And of course, at age 16, I don't have experience in the circular world. I have a colleague who is very experienced. She always knows how to get more students and by talking to the parents. I'm just a teenager, you know. Uh, I didn't know how to present to the, to the parents. So certain months I did good, certain months I didn't do good. But when my pay is not so good, you know, I'm so jealous of this uh, co uh, colleague. I even have hatred. You know, at, by then, I think money became my God. If he, she earned like a couple dollars more than me, you know, I, I even dream that next month the money will have wings and fly into my, uh, my purse. One day, uh, I have some uh, unhappy moment with my colleague. And I said, ah, maybe I should ask my friends how to... Uh, make it out, you know. So it is a Saturday. I know all my friends are in the fellowship, so I go to the fellowship and find them. I was late that day. They still have, uh, you know, uh, or some speakers speaking to them. I came in and sit at the back. While I was sitting down, the speaker in front said that in the Bible, there is a verse say that if you earn the whole world, but you lost your own soul, what good it is? At that moment, I think he is speaking to me. I think I have earned quite a bit of money for my age. But I have so much stress and struggle. I feel like I almost lose my own life. What is this good? Money is not as powerful as I thought it is before. As I was continuing thinking my own issues, you know, the speaker said that, but Jesus loves us so much. He always gives solution in the Bible verses. Jesus said, if you are heavy burden, come to me, I will give you peace. At that moment, I so much want that peace. I guess it's the first time I really listen a message for myself. So, of course, that night I have a calling, you know, uh, decision making. So, I accept Jesus as my personal savior. Life did not change. Still go to school, still struggle, school work, still have to do tuition, still have unhappy moments. But the first time I feel like my life really is a little bit different is a couple of weeks later, we got paid. My colleague got paid so much higher than me. And out of nowhere, I will go to her and say, uh, so-and-so, congratulations, you did so well this month. I was so happy for you. As I turn around, I hit my, myself. I said, you're crazy. She earned more and you're happy for her? What's wrong with you? Uh, something is not right. And I keep on thinking, I eat the same thing, I have the same challenge, I uh, did not do anything different, but why I act different? As I look back, the only different things I do within that period of time, I make a confession prayer before the Lord and ask Jesus to be my savior. Of course, later when I became a more dedicated uh, follower of Christ, I know that God changed my worldview. Be happy with those who are happy. And do not be jealous. So that is my first transformation in my life. So I hope that you'll know uh, my, my, my God too. He is good. Thank you. All right. So now it's your turn. Three minutes, all of you. How, how much time did she take? 4.21. 4, 21, okay. Anyway, so you have only three minutes, okay? No mercy, all right? Okay, what are you going to talk about? First... The life, your life before you were baptized or before you became a Christian. For me, it's very simple. I, I worship ancestors. I hate Christians. And I beat on my brothers. Bad anger. That's me. Okay, think. And think about yourself. 
your life, maybe 10 years ago, 20 years ago, or you maybe be born in the Christian family. Think, five or 10 years ago, how have you changed? Because the Bible says it very clearly, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed, the new has begun. Then how did you heard about Jesus? Sunday school, church, summer camp, mm, friends, family, pastors, church leaders, whatever. So how do you heard the gospel? For me, like it's simple. The first time I heard it from a missionary. And then, of course, I watched a movie. And then I was given a chance to repent, baptize and believe. How did it come to you? How did you become a Christian? You heard the gospel and repented. Number three, how have your life changed? How have Jesus changed you? For me, I use only one example because of the, ten, of the three minutes limitation. I, I have very bad habits. I have bad anger. But I was able to forgive the person who killed my daughter. That was my accident story. All right, three minutes. Now bow your head. I give you one minute to prepare. Now you find a person to talk about your testimony, okay? Close your eyes. Once you open your eyes, you talk. Think. Your life before you became a Christian. You have fear, you have anger, you felt meaningless, uh, bad habits, you have idols, you love money, you're too busy making money, or you have a lot of pride in you, selfishness, uh, jealousy, whatever. What was your life before you really surrendered to Jesus? Fear of darkness, fear of uh, just afraid of everything, or just uh, worrisome, uh, lonely. How was your life? Self-centered? Judgmental? All right, move forward. How did your life change when you heard about Jesus? How did you come to know Jesus? A school? Uh, summer camp? Youth camp? Church? Sunday school? Who was... You heard your gospel from a friend, a pastor, a missionary, or who come and share with you? And how did you heard it? John 3, 16. And you felt you were so, that God loves you and you want to receive his love. How did the gospel come to you? Finally, today, how are you different from five, ten years ago or 20 years ago? How have your life changed? How has Jesus changed your life? You have more joy. You like to read the Bible more. In the old days, you don't, you hate it or you don't care. Now you are able to forgive others that you hate or you dislike. Yeah, you have a loving heart to care for others. You don't care in the past. You're so self-centered. How have your life changed? You used to love money a lot and make a lot of money. Now you love to give away a lot. How have your life changed? All right, now open your eyes. Find a person next to you. I give you three minutes. You talk first. Three minutes, you stop, and then next person talk. Quick. All right, now start now. Find a person next to you. Find a, a person next to you. Everyone have to have one person. Come on, find a person. I give you 30 seconds to find a person. Three minutes. Have to. Okay, ready? Go. I'm going to start now. Three minutes starting now. Everybody have to have a person. Come here one minute. Come back. So I know you like to talk. Don't worry, you have a lot of time to talk. Uh, you have a lot of time to talk. Don't worry, this, this, this is a training. So 
three minutes just want to get you a feel how long is three minutes, okay? So if you didn't finish, your, how many of you finish your story? If you don't finish your story, it's okay. You can try later. But let the other person talk now. Okay, stop. Let the other person talk. Okay, starting now. Now is the, the other person talk now. Start now. The other person talk, not you. You stop. You're well done, well done. Three minutes is up. Okay, I want to get you a feel of how long you can talk. My wife reminded me that uh, three minutes is just a guideline. Of course, you can go four minutes, five minutes. It just, but usually three minutes is usually the guideline. And uh, people have three minutes to, to hear anything. More than that, usually uh, they are busy or whatever. Just uh, five minutes, within five minutes is doable. So give yourself now... You, your goal is to talk to strangers. That's what you say. Your church goal is here and far, right? You want to share the gospel to strangers, right? All of you are believers already, right? You could go to someone's the, mm, strangers. So now stand up. Find a person that is, you are not familiar with. Come on. Find a person that is not familiar with. Come on. Find, find someone that you don't know a lot, okay? Are you got... 30 seconds to find it. It will start very soon. 10, 9, 8, 7, 5, 4, 3. Sit down. 1, sit down. All right, quickly. Sit down and talk. Starting now. 3 minutes start now. Three minutes start now. Same thing, yes. Share your testimony. Same. Let the other person talk now. You have talked enough. Let the other person talk. Okay, start now. The other person, three minutes start now. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, now you pass. You just go and tell others. That is the key. You just go and tell others and see how God works in your life. And you see signs and wonder will follow testimonies in the gospel. Now, your testimony is not the gospel. The gospel is Jesus Christ died and rose again. That is the gospel, right? Remember, testimony is just open the door for the gospel. People want to see how it relates to you. What does it matter to me? Like I say, I can forgive the person that killed my daughter. Like, what? Yes. With the power of God's love, and power, he can change and transform you. So, you are the living example of how the gospel can, the power of the gospel. So the gospel, how do you share the gospel? All of you have a sheet of paper, right? Find a sheet of paper that's lying around. And this is your homework. You finish this, you can go home. This is the final test. It's a blank sheet of paper. If you cannot do anything with this sheet of paper, you're not going to share the gospel. Sharing the gospel with the sheet of paper, all right? It takes six minutes. And this is on YouTube. I have it uploaded in YouTube. If you forgot how to do it, go back to YouTube. And uh, your, the link I've given to your pastor, and then you can have, everybody can have it, okay? What are we, okay, follow the video, because I have to do it, I recorded it, and uploaded it in the, on the uh, YouTube for you. Okay, listen. Let me share with you a story that changed my life. It says, God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Let me use this sheet of paper to tell you the story. What you can do is to just fold this paper, like you fold it in many uh, origami, uh, just, just fold it, and then you fold it again, like this. Now it looks a little like a house or a pyramid, right? But now you just wrap it together, line it up, good, edge to edge, line it up, 
what we're going to do is we're going to use these letters. We're going to cut it up. I mean, the small pieces of paper. They make le words out of it. And the key here is folding it like this. And then all the letters will come out here. So you see, one third kind of folded. Another thing is you just fold it again. Like this. In the middle, you just cut it up like this. Or you can use the scissors to cut it. Okay? If somebody have any issue, uh, okay. ask your neighbor, okay? <laughs> okay, wrap it like a taco. Wrap it up like a taco. Wrap it up. You have to fold the edge, edge to edge. They have to meet together, okay? Because you're going to make letters out of this. With all this cutting, you're going to make a letter, words out of it, okay? You have to be flush. You know what I mean by flush? Yeah. Flush, meaning they are they're on the same side. All right, flush. So now this is the key. You just fold it. This is the key. You fold it. Two thirds fold it up. One third coming out. Like this. Yeah. Take that. Take the help. Like this. No, no, like, like, like yeah, oh, yeah. Yo, let me see. Like this. Because you're going to fold it one more time. So you see, this is one third, one third, one third. One third, one third, one third. Then the words, the letter will come out very beautiful. One, fold it one more time. Fold it one more time, yes. Fold it one more time, like this. Got it? Let me see yours. It's good. Okay. Yours is good. Yours is really good. Hers is very full of her. Let me see yours. Very good. Follow him. Follow him. Don't tell. Make sure everybody. Yeah, you're very good. Yes, you two go tell others. Make sure you ever. No, this one have to be to get. This. Oh, like this. Yes. You see, yours oh. is like this. You you need to fold it up a little higher. Okay, fold it up a little higher. Yes, two third folded, one third protruding. Now, the key is okay. Okay, go ahead. You tear it in the middle here. There is this middle here. Tear it down here. Like here. Cut it right here. Right there. You just cut it like this. All the way. Tear it. Yes. Use your force. Tear it down. All the way down. <laughs> yes, tear it all the way down. Yes, all the way down. Tear it all the way down. And you fell everything. Then open every sheet. Open every sheet. Now, the longest one, put it on the side. The longest one, don't open. You open the longest one last. Okay? The others all open it. Open up because you're going to make words out of it. You're going to make letters and words out of it. Okay? Open everything. Open everything. Flatten it. Open it up. Flatten it. Open the long one last. Four pairs. Your words have to be flattened so that your words can come out. Flatten it, yes. All right. Now you open the last one. Okay, a video.
You have to fatten it. Okay, life, life. Stop, 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 stop. Do your life first. Stop. Do your life first. Life. Everybody got a life? You got life? Your L should be long, you know? No. Every piece has to be used. You cannot be one missing, nothing missing. It should look beautiful. You get a broken line? Hey, That's hey, true. Hey, hey. You all get a broken line. I want to know what the Chinese L, is. same length. L. Same length. Oh, okay. the long L. The long yeah, long L. L. You see, his L is beautiful. Your L is... Okay, don't worry. Okay. I'll fix it. Because you bend. The way you bend oh, okay. is not the same, same size. Then it... All right, you got it, L? Now, play. What happens if you take away Jesus? Come on, TV. Now some people say, I don't care. I don't, I don't want Jesus. So you do not want Jesus to be in your life. What, what happened to this life? What you can do now is you have to stir fry. Stir fry it. Stir fry. Take the two L out. Take the two L out. See what happened to life without Christ. You don't take the two I. Two I. You do not say that the word speaks for itself. That then we and we do that. What happened a life without Christ? One day we will all go to hell and face judgment because we are offending God in so many ways. Our thoughts, our actions, our hearts, our attitude, pride, jealousy, even disobedience to parents is a sin against God. We all go to hell. But God loves us. Send his son. Some people who doesn't have Christ in their heart, they live a life. But it's, it's a miserable life, emptiness, it's like a living hell. God sent His Son just for this purpose, so that we don't have to live in that kind of bondage, that kind of uh, Put life back. emptiness. God wants to give us a new life. A life that is supposed to be anyone you can't even find your help. The Bible says anyone who believes can have an eternal life. Life, hell, life. Put life back. Put Christ back. To him, because he lived in it, he gave us the power and the to overcome all sins and temptations. This is new life. How do you believe? The Bible says, how do you believe? It's ABC. You acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God and come to save us. B, you believe that Jesus has died for your sins and my sins. C, is confess. Lord, I have sinned against you. This is A, is free. But you have to breathe to live. So salvation is free, but you have to believe. And then you will receive this new life. So how? You can pray like this. You can pray with me. I say the word. You can repeat after me. <clears throat> Jesus, 
Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for my sins. I want to confess my sins and receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. May you help me and change me to be a person you want me to be. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can pray with me like this. Okay. You can this, you can kill others and oh. bless others. This is six, only six minutes, okay? From cutting to telling the gospel and invite, six minutes. Ten minutes is more than enough, all right? Now, say it with me. How you share the gospel using this one? Think your goal, life, hell, life. Say it with me. Life, hell, hell, life. Easy, right? When you cut it, life, hell, life. And then invitation. Life, Hell, life, that invitation. You, you, mean, you want to receive this new life in Christ. How do you invite people? Say it with me. Air is free. <coughs> but you have to breathe to live. Right? Salvation is free. You have to receive to be forgiven, to have a new life. It's a gift you have to receive. So how? A, B, C. Say it with me. A, B, C. A, A, acknowledge that I sin against God. B, believe that Jesus is the only Savior. C, confess and commit my life to Jesus. Let me tell you how you can pray. And if you want to, you can pray with me. This is how you can, this is what your homework is today. Live, hell, live, and invite the person ABC. All right, then you're done. Then you graduated. Very easy. So this is how you invite a person to receive Christ. Dear friend, I've shared live, hell, life with you. That just as air is free, and you have to receive it to live. Salvation is free. This new life is free, but you have to receive it. How? ABC. Acknowledge that you have sinned against God. We all have sinned. B. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and die for our sins, rose again. See, I want to confess my sin and receive Christ as my Lord and Savior and commit my life to Him. You can pray like this. See, if you want to pray with me, say, Dear Lord, that uh, I want to surrender my life to You. I acknowledge that I've sinned against You. I believe that You died on the cross for my sins. See, I want to confess my sin and commit my life to You. So help me, change me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Is this prayer the desire of your heart right now? Say it with me. Is this prayer the desire of your heart right now? For training, I wanted you to repeat after me. If this is your prayer, the desire of your heart right now, you can pray with me, okay? It has to come from your heart. Dear God, thank you for loving me. I acknowledge that I've sinned against you. I believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, died and rose again for my sins. I want to confess and I want to commit my life to you. Please change me. Give me a new life. Make me the person you want me to be. May you bless me and my family. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Say it with me. Life, life hell, hell, life, life invitation, A, B, C. That's your homework now. Life, talk to a person. Life, shoot. No, 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 tell. But why are you to use the words? Use the word. Use the, use the character. Find a person. Life, hell, life, invitation, A, B, C. Come. Then you're done. Find a person. Use this sheet of paper. Life. Hmm? Life, hell, life. Invitation, ABC. Every one of you have to lead someone to Christ. Otherwise, you cannot go home. Lead someone to Christ, okay, today. <laughs> Practice. The same... For those who are interested, I'll give you the video. The same sheet of paper can become Chinese words too. Same. Chinese word? Yes, Chinese word.
All right, let's come back uh, because of the time uh, limitations here. Say it with me. Then you go back and do it live. Hell. Live. Invitation. A, B, C. Okay, close your eyes. We're going to dismiss. I want you to pray to God. I have a whole work to do. Who should I tell? I want you to think of a person you can tell. If it's a Christian, you cut the cross and train him to go share the gospel. If it's not a Christian, life, hell, life, invitation, ABC. Anyone you meet on the street, in the car, at home, at school, wherever it may be, either he's a Christian, cut the cross and train him. If it's a non-Christian, share the gospel with him. So think and pray. Your neighbors, your family, your brothers, your sisters, your parents, whoever it may be, it's your homework, okay? So before you come Sunday, you must have done this homework. At least share it with someone. Practice. Pray for you right now. Dear God, we thank you for this time. We want to obey you. You say go share the gospel and go be your witnesses. Lord, we need you. May your Holy Spirit enable and empower us to go and be your witness and share the gospel to others. Those who have believed in you, we'll train them to share as we have been trained. That is discipleship. And for those who have not heard the gospel, we share it with them and give them an invitation. Just as the gospel has been shared to us, our life has been transformed, we know that you will transform lives through the gospel. Thank you. May you bless all of us according to your will. And this we close in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Emmanuel, God bless. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow we have sessions, two sessions, right? Okay, praise the Lord. And Sunday, of course. All right, you are dismissed. You have homework to do.